Hello everyone, Scott JUA from Crucible Custom Props, Nerfworks Lab and all the forums here. Uh, today I have a first for you, well sort of. So it's an E11 of course, as you can tell, um, which is not a first, I've done many of those before. But this one, this one here, is the very first um, Field Marshal all aluminum uh, kit that he made. So he made every single part on this aside from the T-Track. Um, he, uh, it's been a project in, I don't know, it's taken over a year, maybe two years, uh, working on this. Um, he has, it's an aluminum tube with all of the different things, uh, aluminum welded to it. Uh, he's machined and had the stampings made for the stock, machined all the parts, um, machined the trigger, had injection molded grips made, um, everything. Aside from the magazine, uh, the magazine is an original, but uh, his counter is a complete replica that he's made. His scope is a complete replica that he's made. Uh, every single bit is a complete replica. Um, this is the Field Marshal one. So this is the first one I've seen done. I don't know if anybody else has done them yet, but I know, um, I'm sure they have them, but this is the first one I've seen um, and because I did it. But anyway, let me uh, take you on a tour here. Um, so it's pretty light overall in comparison compared to the real deal. Get the other side. It does have a bolt. A very strong spring. It doesn't have a catch or anything for uh, the trigger or anything. There is a dummy barrel in it, which you cannot see because of the T-Track. Um, but it's there. And it's, got, it's just, just a solid dummy barrel that the uh, bolt backs up to. Um, and under the trigger is a switch. If you were to put electronics in it, there is a, a three position selector switch here, which mimics the positions of the, uh, um, the original, say fire and auto. It's not as clicky, but it's, it's, a, it's a switch. So anyway, I will not be doing electronics installs on these. Um, I probably won't be doing too many more electronics installs other than maybe DL44s, um, the occasional lightsaber, things like that. But something like this is going to need to go with somebody else, I think. Um, just quite a bit of work. Um, I'm just, my schedule is just too full to take on a big project like the electronics for this. Um, but as a replica, it's very cool. His uh, scope, M38 scope, it actually is machined all the way out. It doesn't have a prism or anything in it, but you can see through it, sort of. Uh, let's see what else. The counter is pretty cool. There's no moving parts in it, but um, it's a very close replica to the real one. Uh, he even makes his scope rail here. Now, this part is a bit high. Whoops. For But it's, it's accurate to some of the E11s that you see on screen in A New Hope. Um... So there's nothing wrong with it. I prefer, personally prefer the lower, the lower mount one, um, but uh, this is accurate to uh, some of the E11s on screen. The uh, stock does come out and can mount and everything, and uh, it's a complete full sterling replica, more or less. Uh, let's see if I can get that on camera. But um, you know, you mostly would want to have it locked up into this position like a uh, Stormtrooper blaster. So there it is. This is the complete thing. It does have crinkle paint. Oh my God, there's some controversy uh, on the forums, uh, Facebook groups about crinkle paint. Um, so let me put that to rest here. Let's talk about that. Um, the original Sterlings from the factory for military use were a kind of a satin black finish. But commercial, all commercial um, and export use uh, sterlings were finished in a crinkle type finish. Now, we cannot get our hands on the actual um, original branded material that they use to do that. So the next best thing is a high temp engine paint with a black, black crinkle finish. Um, there are plenty of photos of the original A New Hope props to show that they were in fact 
commercial models because they do have the crinkle paint. When crinkle paint wears, it wears smooth. So um, as you can see, um, this real one, this real one is, uh, is has a crinkle finish to it. And in spots, it's worn smooth wherever there's some wear on it. Uh, mine is not typically, mine is not very worn. But if you can take a look at how in dimensions, these are so very much the same. Um, the only difference is the weight. The original is very heavy and this one is fairly light. In fact, I think the heaviest thing on here is the, is the scope. Um, but overall, I mean, it's a pretty much dead on replica. Uh, you can pick apart little things or, you know, uh, you have a, an Allen, a bolt here instead of a, a rivet and a pin, um, something like that. But otherwise, they're pretty much identical. They're they're very close. Um, pretty cool. So that's it. That's the that's the Field Marshal E11 kit. Um, this is his power cylinders. Uh, this is an original magazine, of course, cut down. Or maybe an original 10 round magazine. Let's see. Uh, mine is a, is a factory 10 round magazine. No, so that one's a cut down original 34 round. And the, my, this is a factory 10 um, with dummies because this is inert. It doesn't do anything. Um, but take a look at the, the bolt detail. Obviously, there's no serial number. And this being aluminum uh, does not blue the same as steel. And it won't have the same patina. But... Um, it still has got the, got the proper look. The, uh, charging handle is almost identical. Let me set these down because that sucker is heavy. Um, but, uh, yeah, so you can see there, they're very close. Pretty neat. Mine actually is kind of dented right here, so this isn't even round anymore. Um. But even the trigger guard, everything, the, the, the shape of the trigger feels exactly the same as the real one. Um, pretty cool deal. Even has a switchable peep sight, which you don't use because you lock it in place to, to put the rail on. Um, I don't know what else really I can say more about it, but there it is. So that's it, guys. Thanks for looking.